there's often two views of artificial intelligence and impact on society. You have the scary robot view, and they're all going to take over the world, right? And then you have the utopian kind of, we're all going to retire on the beach because everything's going to be taken care of, and there's no poverty, and there's no disease, and, and there's something in between. I'm curious, Georgia Tech's view on how they believe artificial intelligence is going to impact society. Uh, I think what we're going to see, first of all, let's recall and remind ourselves that hardware and software are not naturally occurring phenomena. Uh, it's people that creates the hardware and software and the algorithms. So uh, the agency of human beings is really an important point. I think if we are deliberate and thoughtful about applying this very powerful technology of artificial intelligence, and I'm using the term broadly to refer to a whole host of various technologies, if we are deliberate and thoughtful and ethical about the application of this technology, uh, it can truly benefit business and society. So I think it's up to us, and I think this time we're going to be clever and lead to great consequences and outcomes of technology. Yeah, I think that's a good point. If you look at the, the Microsoft chatbot example, right, and if you haven't heard, basically the chatbot started looking at Twitter and, and communicating in a Twitter-like manner. So it started cussing and using vulgar, vulgar terms. And what I thought was interesting about that case study is the humans actually fed uh, the, the chatbot more vulgar terms to convince it that that's the right way to do it. So back to your point, it's not the technology that's the problem, it's the humans that we have to account for. In your experience, in Accenture's experience, what are some of the industries that are really succeeding in taking advantage of AI capabilities? Yeah, I think that's it's a good question because it really does vary, right? And so I was actually thinking about this this weekend, and I was um, thinking about how do you answer the variability we have in AI across industries, across, across clients. And my three-year-old son actually really likes puzzles, right? And so he loves these puzzles with these really small pieces, and he loves throwing them on the floor and then making me go pick them up. And then when you start to put together a puzzle, you start with the edge pieces, the edge pieces, right? You, you find the frame. And what you notice is once you find the edge, things start to move much more quickly. And then once you get about halfway through the puzzle, now you're exponentially starting to, to finish the puzzle. And at the end, you're kind of racing to finish it, right? And I feel like that's, how, that's what's happening in, in artificial intelligence today, is those pieces of the puzzle are starting to come into focus for many of our clients. It's the technology, it's the people, it's the platform, it's the AI, the machine learning, it's the people, it's the ethic, ethics, right? If you look at the, the number of executives that actually said that they had successful AI deployments, it was interesting to look within industries. Financial services, for example, about 92% said that they had seen successful AI deployments. In technology companies like, like Google, of course, it's very high. In communications companies like AT&T, it's very high. But on the flip side of that, we saw some industries like retail that is actually very low, so about 9% adoption. So at our clients, what we're seeing is once they start the process, they tend to, it takes a while for the first use case, right, and the first intent, and then as they implement the first intent, it becomes exponentially adopted within the company. So for those that are more successful and in using AI technologies, what seems to be the critical success factors for those companies? So we see three critical success, success factors. One is, and this one's probably the most important that's often overlooked, is focused on the user experience first. So user experience is the customer experience and the employee experience. And if you think about what that means, it means that a lot of our clients are trying to look at cost takeout first. Artificial intelligence is going to take cost out of the business. And it's not usually successful. But if you focus on the customer experience and the employee experience first, the cost takeout, I promise, will, will happen. Right? So that's number one. Number two is they have to have a partnership strategy. So in today's world of AI, as many of you know, there is, there is no way that a company can build everything that's required to deploy an AI solution. So you've got to be able to partner with technology partners, you have to be able to partner with ecosystem partners, academia, other companies. At Accenture, we have our own, um, we call it Accenture Insights Platform. We have 200 different pre-built machine learning algorithms that has the data layer, the analytics layer, and the BI layer, 
that we can quickly deploy into our clients. So that you don't need to build it on your own. And I think that's a critical uh, piece of success. And the last one, in that study I mentioned, when we asked those executives the number one reason that those deployments were successful, the answer was uh, ethics training. So if they had done ethics training with their employees prior, prior to the deployment, it was much more successful. What would you say corporations and academia can do better together in that partnership? I think it is important to form partnerships between academia and businesses to create programs that are high quality, accessible, and large scale, and affordable. The, the view on humans plus machines, what do you think that's going to do from a, what is, what is the jobs of the future going to look like from your standpoint? The category that creates the best opportunity for humans and for businesses is this category that I call augmented work. And this is where human beings and machines team up, truly collaborate to get a job done. And there are lots of work that can be redesigned for this category. Let me give you a quick example. If you think about it, uh, in 2016, Google came up with a natural language translator that is really good. Uh, and for everyday consumer translation tasks, it really performs well. OK, then you think about companies that are getting truly global. And for customer support, they need to have a translation that is, goes beyond everyday kind of English and really requires um, the deep knowledge of culture, nuances of the language, nuances of the business, and the nuances of products and services that the company is providing. Mm -hmm. Now, no machine translation at this point can have all of that, and human beings that have those capabilities are just not that many of them, but they have, team by teaming up, machine translation and human beings they are able to really scale this up very effectively and very efficiently. Make sure you all check out the facial recognition drink recommender in the back. It's really cool, and it actually predicts your age and your your um, your yeah your temperament. But don't worry, the age we actually added some data bias in there, so it's not going to surprise you. You're going to be happy, I promise. But thank you all very much.